Hi everyone, so today we're going to have a look at externalities. Um, so what I would like you to do is think about the three questions that are at the bottom. So first of all, what are the positive impacts that you have on society? What are the negative impacts you have on society? And then finally, um, think about whether you could draw a diagram that shows the positive externalities created by you staying in education. So if you pause that there, that should take you a couple of minutes just to do that. Awesome, so we're going to have a look at externalities. And this is what I would like you to think about. So the process that we've looked at so far is we've only really looked at firms and consumers. So we've looked at how firms produce a product or a service and then consumers purchase the product or service. What we haven't considered though is the impacts on third parties. Whenever a good or service is consumed or produced, there will be impacts on third parties. And this is what we're gonna have a look at. So externalities can be positive or negative. Um, externalities in general are the costs and benefits to a third party created by economic agents so businesses and consumers, when undertaking their activities. A negative externality is a cost to a third party that is not included in the price of the economic activity, and a positive externality are the benefits to a third party that are not included in the economic activity. So have a look at the image on the right there and pause this video and write down any positive or negative externalities that you think are being created by that road being used. So just pause this video. Negative production externalities. Um, negative production externalities exist when the um, production creates external costs. So let's have a look at some examples. So air pollution is a really good example. So a car company will produce cars they are then consumed or bought by a consumer. Um, that consumer will then use that car. And while they're using that car, they will create um, air pollution by doing so. Another great example is noise pollution created by a factory. Um, so when businesses are producing goods or services, goods or services, um, they will use factory and then noise is then created by doing um, that. So final example here for you um, of negative externalities. So an oil company will produce petrol. A consumer will then buy petrol to fill up their car. However, there are negative externalities that are then impacted um, as well. So society is then impacted by the car fumes and the pollution that is then created. So the consumer and the business are imposing these negative externalities on um, the rest of society. So a really good example of where negative externalities have incurred is when the BP oil disaster occurred. So what I would like you to do is you are going to research the BP oil disaster. And while you are researching it, you're going to brainstorm the private costs that BP incurred from the disaster. You want to think about um, any increase in um, costs of oil and any clean cleanup they had to pay for, any fines they had to um, pay for the government. And then I went to, to brainstorm the external costs that, that they imposed upon third parties. So any costs that they impose on anyone that was not themselves and not the consumer. And then the final question is, how could BP have reduced their negative externalities? How could the oil spill not have been as bad as it actually was? Awesome, so pause the video here.
So now you've had a bit of a chance to look at negative externalities, we are going to move on and start to look at positive ex um, externalities. We only look at positive consumption externalities in Edexcel. Um, so in terms of examples, there's lots and lots of examples around you. Um, so a really good example would be a local firm investing in training its workforce. That's going to mean that the local community has better trained workers. And then if we then think about productivity, that's going to then increase their productivity and could potentially increase increase the revenue that firm's making. If that then will filter through to the rest of the economy, think about what happens as well. Another really good example is um, well-kept gardens, increase house prices in the local area. So for all of the front gardens and back gardens are really well kept, um, the house prices generally start to increase. When you then come to sell your house, that's then going to have a benefit on third parties as well. The main issue with positive consumption externalities is they create something that's called the free rider problem. So the free rider problem are the external benefits that are received but unpaid for. So if we look at that second example again, um, people who are not necessarily keeping their gardens as nicely as other people will still benefit from the increased house price, but they haven't necessarily paid for that. As well, so example of positive externality, farmer produces fruit and vegetables, the consumer then buys the fruit and vegetables, society is then going to be um, healthier, they are going to be impacted positively because the citizens are healthier, got a healthier workforce, and there could be a lower cost to the NHS if all of the citizens are then going to be more healthy. and negative externalities on a diagram and we are going to adapt our supply and demand diagram to reflect what this thing could show. So this is where we convert our demand curve to our marginal private benefit curve. So your demand curve is now going to be known as MPB. So the marginal private benefit is the additional amount of satisfaction that a consumer gains from an additional unit of a good or service. So think about consumers consuming a good or service and the more units that you're consuming, you're going to get an additional amount of satisfaction from consuming the extra unit. Supply curve is then the marginal private cost curve. So we're thinking about firms still, and the MPC is the cost to producers of producing an additional unit. So a market is in equilibrium when supply equals demand. Therefore, the market is also in equilibrium where marginal private costs equal marginal private benefits. Consumers and producers will operate at the point where marginal private benefits equal marginal private costs. And private benefits are also maximised where MPB equals MPC. So the market's optimum position is the point where marginal private benefits equal marginal private costs. Is that they create market failure. So... You're going to have a look at an example of vaccinations now. So these are the four questions that you are going to answer. First of all, do vaccinations create externalities, either negative production externalities or positive consumption externalities? Second of all, why do some consumers choose to not be vaccinated? Third of all, why are schools in Italy banning up unvaccinated students? And finally, what type of irrational consumer behaviour is then evident? in terms of vaccination. So pause that video here and have a look at those four questions. Negative externality. So in one of the previous videos, you may have started to have a look at the example of Heathrow Airport and producing an extra runway. So Pause this video here and what you are going to do is you're going to brainstorm the private costs, the private benefits, the external costs and the external benefits of this third runway now being produced. Use the information at the bottom. So there, there is an example at the bottom of a private cost, an external benefit in that little bit of text at the bottom.
production externality diagram. Negative production externalities are when a producer only considers their marginal private cost, but creates negative externalities in their production process. And this producer does not include these negative production externalities in the price of their activity. So the market is in equilibrium at the point where marginal private costs equal marginal private benefits. And as the producer does not consider the external costs, they are producing where MPB equals MPC. If they considered external costs, what would happen would be their supply curve would shift up to S1 and they would then produce at the point where marginal social costs equal marginal private benefits. The firm's optimal quantity is Q, because that's the point where MPC equals MPB. However, society's optimal quantity is Q1, which is the point where MSC, so the social costs, are equal to the private benefits. The difference between private costs and social costs is the size of the external cost. So therefore, the firm is overproducing by the difference between Q and Q1. And this firm is being allocatively inefficient because they are pricing this product too low and they are producing too high an output. For what happens is externalities create a type of market failure. So there's a few things that should then happen. So in order to eliminate this market failure, the market should operate where social benefits equal social costs. Economic agents, however, only operate where private benefits equal private costs. But society benefits if we operate where social costs equal social benefits. So have a look at this example on the side here for you. There is some data that shows you how long it takes for plastic to biodegrade in the ocean. And what I would like you to do is just think about the impact of plastic on the environment and what type of cost it then has. So just pause the video here. that link at the bottom if you wish to is you are going to consider how high your carbon footprint is so when you click on that link you will see some really good examples of the different types of um, foods that you are eating on a daily basis and the impact that they will then have on the carbon footprint that you create so how could you realistically reduce your carbon footprint and finally if you made one change to your diet which would it be so that's the end of externalities. Thank you very much.